And now for our weekly news segment. All right. Let me pull up the Ready. first one here. I am slightly unprepared. Share screen. That's the one that you can get on JM Bullion right now. Um, the the Monero coins here. Oh, the silver? The, oh, yeah, that's really yeah. cool. Tux, Love you it. might keep an eye out to see if something happened where you end up with some. I don't know. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> uh, so uh, we've got the first news is... The Antminer X5, we now know what's inside it. Rabid Mining, uh, basically, they did a video where he tore it down, he opened it up, and it's like what people were, were saying, what they could deduce from checking out the firmware, is it's a bunch of Risk Five CPUs. Uh, it's a lot of cores, uh, and it's it, you'd think it would be a lot more powerful than it is, but, I mean, it's it doesn't really compete even with um, in terms of efficiency with modern Ryzen desktop processors, Zen 4 at least. And yeah, it, it puts out quite a lot of performance for being a single device on a single board. But um, no, I guess that doesn't wanna... But yeah, it's I'm... like, uh, in terms of efficiency, it's it's only okay. It's not like super superb or anything. Uh, so there's a chip that's a RISC-V Sofon chip. Um, it's just a RISC-V processor made by this, I think, I don't know where the company is from, but yeah, pretty much, pretty much confirming what we already knew. I kind of wonder if you can control the output of the thing, because if you can, then it might be a very good heater. Because if it's thirteen hundred watts, it'll bake you out of most rooms. Dude, it could but be a nice space heater. If you can nice set it down, uh, can can set it down to like five or six hundred watts or something like that, it might not be enough to bake you out of the room, but actually keep your room warm. So you might be able to do that if you can set it down. Honestly, instead of just uh, spending uh, uh, electricity to heat your room, why not just mine Monero? And this will this will probably uh, heat your room pretty fast. I, I I've sure. been doing that for years now. Yeah, yeah. It's it's never really taken off though, right? I mean, people have been talking about that as a as a a use case from day one. Arctic is always thought, talking about it. Depends on how much heat you actually need. <laughs> Yeah, see, I've got three. I've got three computers doing it right now, and it'll put about eh, two or three hundred watts. But that's not going to be enough to heat the room. It's just going to be enough to keep it from getting cold quite as fast. I need probably six or seven to actually warm it. Now, now remind me with this with this uh, quote unquote ASIC miner, which it's which it's not. Um, what did the price end up coming in at, and is it something that's that's actually very competitive with what's what you could build on on your own no not i mean not really it was around uh four thousand dollars usd um mm -hmm. and yeah I, it's i think it's reasonable for the performance you're getting but like because of the it's like the it's not hitting like the best efficiency it's not and especially right now because of how much we're in a bear market how much Monero is worth it's not like profitable for almost anybody to deploy that's an, exp that's an expensive space heater yes uh it, the the return on investment with this thing right now would be like over it take over a year probably um and yeah monero will probably be up in the future so maybe you buy it now and it's an investment down the line but it's like mm -hmm. in, in a year from now there's going to be way more you know efficient ways to mine Monero with even newer Ryzen processors, most likely. Right. So it's really, it's really not that big of a deal. And like we said, we could assume Bitmain has been mining with these devices before they shut them for a yes, year or Yes, these devices are not new. These are, which is why, probably why that they're not as efficient as current desktop CPUs is because, yeah, they've been using these for a couple of years at least. Uh, they, I guess, they're in the habit of making something, using it for a couple years, and then, you know, when it's good and new, and then selling it off as a new product uh, later down the line when it's just not as profitable for them anymore. So, yeah, there we go. All right. Definitely a little bit interesting, though, and concerning maybe at how much hash rate they've taken up for Monero. What would be really interesting is to see Hi. if, uh, Hi. if uh, somebody could reverse engineer uh, when they were made and how long they've been mining and try to correlate that with uh, 
the the mm. mining curves and see yeah, if yeah, Bobby's yeah. thesis well, I know Howard out you to be talked true. about some of that um, on the interview and the talk he had about looking at certain statistics to try and correlate when they may have been using those. Um, yes. But uh, next, uh, Gary at, from Tom Emmer, who seems to be basically promoting Monero without directly saying it uh, from, I think we talked about that last week. He's calling out mm -hmm. Gary Gensler for not being an impartial regulator. And his answers to his questions today just prove that. Uh, do you want me to show any of this clip? I, I didn't see Yeah, it, you so can show it. Right, it's, it's pretty epic. He goes, he goes at him hard. In the interest of my limited time, I'd appreciate it if you would comply with it. Uh, Mr. Gensler, is it fair to say generally that large institutions in any given industry benefit more from regulatory uncertainty than everyday market participants or smaller institutions who don't have the scale or the capital to fund expensive compliance teams? Uh, large institutions could benefit uh, from uncertainty. Reclaiming my time. The answer is yes, sir. <laughs> Mr. Gensler, you had an 18-year career at Goldman Sachs where you were partner and co-head of finance, correct? Yes, sir. Thank you. And is it correct to say that you made most of your personal wealth directly through your employment at this bank, bank Goldman Sachs? Um, I've done well since then, too, sir. I'll take that as a yes as well. You described the SEC under your leadership as the cop on the beat watching out for our constituents, constituents, correct? I think that's a mandate that Congress Yeah, and I think you've us. said that, reclaiming my time. The answer is yes, sir. If you could just comply with what I've asked, I'd appreciate it. But given your 18-year career at one of the biggest banks in the world and the personal financial fortune you amassed there, do you think it's possible for you to serve as an impartial regulator and not favor large financial inst intermediaries? Absolutely, sir. Well, Mr. Gensler, do you believe the vast majority of digital assets meet the investment contract test and are therefore securities operating illegally outside of the U.S. regulatory umbrella? As I've said, many of these assets are basically the public is anticipating Sir, is that a yes on the efforts of others. Is the answer then yes? Uh, again, without prejudging anyone, I do think that the significant Reclaiming my time. Are I'll take it as a yes. Contracts. And to be clear, sir, this perspective has nothing to do with a concern you noted in a speech last year where you said, quote, over the past year, several bank executives have shared their concerns with me about the sheer number of depositors who have moved money from their bank accounts into crypto related exchanges. Uh, and wallets, that's the problem. End quote. Right? The concern that those bank executives raised was that there's again, I, I reclaim my time. We're getting no, hurt. I've asked you to answer the questions as short as I can so I can use the time I have. And it's clear that you would like to avoid answering the questions, in my opinion. An Obama appointed judge in the Southern District of New York, a bank friendly jurisdiction where you bring most of your cases, recently found that decentralized financial technology, quote, not only removes the so-called middlemen from these transactions, but it also allows users to interact through a variety of methods in an easy and efficient manner, end quote. The court also said underwriters like the ones at banks where you work, sir, are, quote, precisely, precisely the types of individual roles that decentralized exchanges were designed to eliminate, end quote. Mr. Gensler, can you assure this committee that your style of regulation by harassment towards digital asset innovation is to the benefit of every American and not driven by your desires to protect industry incumbents? This is a field that's rife with fraud and manipulation, and I'm, I'm looking out for the American investors who've been hurt by the crypto. Yeah. I'll, I'll reclaim my time. Yeah, Mr. Okay, Gensler, bro. despite your years of rhetoric, like today, I'm convinced you are not an impartial regulator. Instead, it's clear that you are working to consolidate your own power, even though it means crushing opportunities for everyday Americans and, frankly, the financial future of this country. Even the federal courts are highlighting the damage you, sir, are doing to our constituents, and they're telling you that you don't have the legal authority to accomplish your goal of squashing competition in the financial markets. Congress has been telling you that, too. Now, Mr. Gensler, I believe our great financial system is the definition of freedom in this country, and congressional policies must provide room for the traditional financial system to evolve alongside the disruptive digital asset ecosystem. That said, it cannot be understated that a common theme throughout your career, sir, is your relentless loyalty to the largest financial institutions at the clear expense 
of innovation, competition, and everyday Americans. I yield back. I suspect some large financial institutions would not agree back. with that. There's no question, now, sir. I <laughs> yield back my time. Uh, all right. <laughs> Mr. Emmer. To be fair, I don't really like when... I don't really okay. like Congress very much, but it is really great to see them take them taking down a peg like that. I pulled up yeah, his dude. voting record real quick. Uh, oh hey, he voted nay on marijuana opportunity reinvestment <laughs> act. He voted. Bad. He voted uh, yes on national defense authorization for 2022 for 2023. Bad. I mean, he's he a he's yes a on the safe what banking what, act. What are you gonna you know? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, the, is, listen. Yeah. All, all all these guys, they 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 have their you know their incentive one way or the other, right? But this guy's just happens to align with the crypto community, so it, it's 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 good well, to see. Yeah, but I mean, if you, there's, what I there's nobody out, out was, there. He's uh, his voting record is actually turning very libertarian over the last. It looks like over the last year and a half, he's had like almost a come to Jesus moment. And it also looks like the last like seriously questionable thing that he did was the Defense Authorization Act. Um, mm. And it makes me wonder like, you know, if if he's got a guilty conscience or something. But it, I just thought I'd tell people like he looks like he's he's kind of turning a new leaf in a strange way. So. Well, I think a lot of but the if, ways the these guys turn a new leaf is they 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 follow uh, the people, right? The, the, if they're getting positive feedback as they become more and more libertarian, they keep going down that road. And I think he's seeing that, right? I mean, he's seeing uh, he's being hailed as a hero in the crypto community. So now he's just double downing on on it, and he's becoming did, a stronger and stronger voice. Did you say he voted no for marijuana reform? Because uh, I would think a libertarian perspective would be that you can put anything in your body you want to as long as it doesn't harm others. Well, he's not a libertarian. Yeah, I think, I think he's I think saying that he, he's since changed. trying to changed, draw lines uh, for him, like, slowly becoming more libertarian. But he's not. Right. Yeah, he's, a, he's not. He's a Republican. Move to New Hampshire and secede from the Union. But as Tuck said, I mean, we've seen Emmer more than any other congressperson really essentially, you know, talk up Monero without saying the word Monero. I think he's Yeah, I mean, like that yeah, quote we looks saw like last week before, he literally he's, uh, like, was talking about Monero, just didn't say Monero. Yeah, he, he's the St. Cloud and like east of Minneapolis area of Minnesota. And they've had all kinds of problems with like violence from migrants and all kinds of problems with like financial stuff and housing prices. And actually, I'm I'm wondering if uh, because I know that there's been a huge political tide of pressure to try to like um, to deal with some of these issues. And they've taken like a really strong libertarian direction in the last couple years. So I think I think Doug makes a good point. Like in order to stay in office, he's probably got to change his tone a lot. I know that Minneapolis in general is a very blue area. St. Paul, too, because I used to live there. Yeah, I used to run a truck driving school in Minneapolis. And um, I think 99 percent of our students were Somali immigrants. <laughs> yep. Here is that Coin Bureau article, Monero versus Bitcoin. Uh, if you want to take a look at that, that'll be in the description. Uh, yeah, it is pretty, it is quite long. Uh, obviously, not going to read this on stream. <laughs> but, What's the conclusion? We go, go down to the conclusion. What is the. Uh... Do we have a TLD? Oh, there it is. Monero and Bitcoin represent two distinct approaches to cryptocurrency with their own unique sets of features and benefits. Bitcoin as the pioneer of the cryptocurrency space offers recognition liquidity and a store of value akin to digital gold eh. it's transparency eh. Eh. while providing financial traceability eh. also allows for audit auditability and regulatory compliance eh. on the other hand monero is. prioritizes privacy above all else providing users with unparalleled anonymity and transaction confidentiality. Its fungibility ensures that all coins are equal, reducing concerns about tainted funds. Monero's community actively supports its mission of financial privacy and security. 
I don't know. Monero seems to actually be more stable than Bitcoin, from what I can tell. The only the only thing I think Bitcoin is actually good for, I mean, well, Bitcoin itself, like if it was like, let's say Bitcoin Cash, right? And in terms of the, uh, it needs to be usable. So like dynamic blocks need to happen. But we're if we're talking about purely the, the full transparency, I think the only good use case for that is probably for the government. If the government used, exclusively used like Bitcoin for all of their transactional purposes, that would be completely public information. Oh, but then there wouldn't be any more black budgets, and they couldn't screw the taxpayers. Uh, yeah, I guess I guess it's just it's just a shame. But Mind of course, you, that's they not going to happen. Char- they just shouldn't have taxes anyway, because taxation is theft. But whatever. Of course, it's not going to happen. They're going to try you to get you to use, you know, probably even Bitcoin, or especially their CBDC. And uh, their CBDC will be even worse than Bitcoin. It'll be even more tied into the Fed and whatnot. But uh, it's it's cool that they're giving a little bit of a spotlight to Monero on here. Uh, so that, yeah, that's awesome. When, when when do you guys think we'll see the change in rhetoric from Bitcoin being a store of value to Monero also being a store of value? Like, no, very few have conceded on that, right? Those that are in the Bitcoin realm and Monero realm have have never gone as far as saying. You know, Monero can also and also is a store of value. Do you think we see that narrative change any anytime soon? I think it's starting to change, and especially when we we we'll end up seeing more arrests, uh, not purely based off of Bitcoin, but partially due to it. Because like, yeah, Bitcoin is traceable, but like once again, we don't really know exactly what ch- like Chain Analysis is doing. They've been called out for some BS, but I think in the future we'll definitely see more arrests that heavily rely on certain chain analysis uh and then you know seizure related to that as soon as it's like oh even though you hold the keys if they know how it's being spent and stuff i go after you that like destroys a lot of its like sovereignty um if they can Mm -hmm, still go mm -hmm. after you for knowing what you use it for and i think then people will start to realize wow yeah privacy actually matters in this regard Uh, and not knowing how much you have too because if it's like oh you've got 50 Bitcoin, you know, this wallet might be actively monitored. I think that, uh, I don't know if anybody's noticed, but I very rarely hear people talk about the store of value aspect of Bitcoin compared to how it was even like six months ago. I realize people do still say it, but you know, it's like six or seven months ago, even it was like, Everybody who was starting to move to the Monero side of things would be, like, oh, you can hold wealth in Bitcoin, but you know, you make your transactions with Monero. I don't ever really hear anybody talk about Bitcoin's store of value properties like we used to not that long ago. So honestly, I think a lot of people, they're just like behind on the times of the talking points if they're still talking about it, if anything. If you've got a wallet worth 50 Bitcoin, I'm going to hire somebody to like break into your house and steal it and split like a tenth, like a fourth of the profit with them. Yeah, I think the, the confiscatability of Bitcoin will, will start to show show face as, t- as Tux is saying. I, mean, I think there's an argument to be made. Pri- about privacy like, is security. That versus like your bank account. Obviously, your bank account is like, oh, you know, they can just without without you even knowing just you know steal all your money but it's just not i mean enough, right? bitcoin is is really uh, becoming the ultimate form of traceable property right where you can yep. very yep. easily prove who 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 owns it who has own, you know who has provenance who has ownership um and you can very easily track the title it's it's more akin to digital real estate in my mind than digital gold and I mean, that's why I completely disagree with, um, what was the conclusion? I, this, I mean, Bitcoin doesn't really, like, what, I mean, unless you care about ordinals, it doesn't, what does it do better? What does it offer that Monero doesn't already offer? Unless you care about ordinals. <laughs> uh, right. So why compromise when the alternative is easier, cheaper, faster, and uh, better long term. Fungible. 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 Yep. There we go. All uh, right. Moving on. Moving on. Yep. Oh, yep. Uh, interview with 
farewell interview with Justin Ehrenhofer, if you want to see that. Uh, and um, yeah, I, I, I interviewed him before he's leaving Cake, and he talked awesome. a little bit about his time there. And we've got, uh, let's see. Let well, I'm sure we'll get Justin up on, on uh, Monerotopia uh, at some point once he's ready to talk about what he's working on. That would be awesome. Yeah. I got to say, like, my curiosity is through the roof because, I mean, that is a man who puts his attention in some really, really awesome stuff. And to think of, like, what he has going on that's so focused and intensive that he has to be like, yeah, I'm going to have to roll back my commitments to Cake. Like, that has to be yeah. the most epic project ever. Because, I, I mean, as far as I could tell, he seemed like he absolutely loved what he did. So, like, yeah. what kind of awesomeness must be going on in the background for him to be like, yeah, we got to find a guy to take on some of these. Like, I mean, just I, I can't wait, man. Yes, that's exactly what I'm thinking, too, because I, I like you said, I think he 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 passionately enjoyed working for cake and he he made great strides with it. I mean, he a lot a lot happened under under the guise of of Justin. So and there, there, you know the growth potential with cake is tremendous so for him to essentially walk away i mean i know he's still going to be consulting for them but for him to walk away from that position um i have to imagine he's he's got some big things brewing he's, he's made a pro release uh monero 2 he he's made a <laughs> he's made a project where you swipe where you can swipe your visa card at any point of sale terminal and you uh you and the business both get monero <laughs> not bad what do we got here next up um senator warren's crypto money laundering bill builds momentum as more sign on uh among nine supporters of lochay's effort to ward off illicit users of crypto our democratic chairs of the homeland security judiciary committees so i guess just an anti-crypto bill basically yeah, it's just it's interesting to see it gaining momentum. Um, yep. Mostly among I Democrats. I don't know if you guys actually remember. Money laundering act. I don't know if you guys actually remember. I, I realize it was like forever ago, and she's basically a dinosaur at this point. But um, like way back in the day, she used to be super anti-banking cartel. Has anybody ever looked back at like what like what made her a big shot was she would just rant and rave about yeah, like uh remember back like in the Occupy right? Wall Street days like she was like she was ahead of the Occupy Wall Street thing like complaining about how banks were getting in on all of these insider deals and it was destroying people's livelihoods and stuff and part of me just thinks back like what happened man like she actually used to be super super anti-bank and like really really pro financial freedom and she, she was it's, it's doing all the right things like it's just so weird it's all an act i mean we know it you know these people are they're the dip, there's really no difference between those in dc and those in hollywood it's just uh, a different form of the same thing the people one, who one not, they're much just not as good. Look, they're just not as good looking, right? Right. They're not as good looking in, in DC, right? I mean, but it's the same job. It's the same job. The, the people without morals are just going to take whatever morals that uh, has the deepest pocketbook. But I mean, her bill is is like extremely uh, unnerving. It's it's concerning for the for the crypto sphere, especially with regards to Monero. So it's. You know, uh, to see it gaining momentum is a little scary. Uh, you know, we see people like Emmer on the other side, um, but I don't know how far this goes. You know, does does this become does this become the thing that get, ends up gaining momentum and, and getting passed in Congress? Do they do they ultimately move in that direction, uh, or does the you know the United States? You know, become a, a, a crypto friendly and Monero friendly place. This we're, we're kind of at the crossroads for that. Yeah, so basically, it extends anti money laundering requirements from the Bank Secrecy Act to providers of digital asset wallets, crypto miners, all these. So it's taking all those I mean, that, AML regulations from 
centralized traditional systems and trying to apply that to crypto. And of course, because most of the crypto systems and services we have today are centralized, they will gladly comply with if this ever went through. So, yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, we're talking about implementing K KYC AML for for miners, right? For for transactions or... Uh, yeah, as if it already isn't bad good. enough just buying crypto on a central exchange already, you know, that applies. All these huh. things take the KYC, but it's just going to make it worse. Georgia right. preparing well, while, while to like pilots. Wallet. Sorry. <laughs> no, <laughs> I'm just saying, saying I, don't, I don't think people realize that the ramifications of how far they're going with that, if it were to pass. I mean, it's, it's, ex it's extreme. Well, you know, uh, Monero, you know, it's just, just kind of kind of works still, you know. <laughs> uh, yeah. As the country is considered for EU membership, the digital wire is seen as providing interoperability with the digital euro while preserving monetary freedom. Uh, press X to doubt. Uh, Georgia's praying limited life CBDC test. National Bank of Georgia has announced that it will advance to research on a digital wire, central bank digital currency, in a limited access live pilot environment. Nine companies, including Ripple labs will take part in the project and one of them will be selected to move forward to the next stage of testing yeah so it looks like uh georgia is testing cbdc uh in collaboration with the wonderful ripple any thoughts on that <laughs> no nope all right moving on uh also, more tests. France, Singapore, and Switzerland test cross-border CBDCs. Project Mariana was developed under the aegis of the Bank for International Settlements. The, uh, the BIS and the central banks of France, Singapore, and Switzerland concluded a joint test of the cross-border trading and settlement of wholesale CBDCs. The Bank de France issued the report on September 28th. Project Mariana. Using uh, DeFi, more CBDC crap. Brazil's crypto surge prompts central bank to tighten regulation. According to the central bank's data from January to August 2023, imports of crypto rose by 44.2% compared with the same period in 2022. The governor of Banco Central de Brazil, Brazil's central bank, said the bank has noted a significant surge in crypto adoption. The country tends to react by tightening the digital assets regulation. Wow. So Brazil's, Brazil's, uh, they're, they're trying to regulate too. Yep. So has anybody noticed the bizarre correlation between uh, CBDCs getting their interoperability with former colonies and vice versa? And I would think that that would be an excellent, like, uh, like a way to create political discontent to show, like, all of these former colonies making their, their cryptos and their CBDCs interoperable with their former, former colonial overlords and just try to draw that line with how, like, they still run everything. Hmm. You're saying you're saying you're surprised that that's nobody's making that correlation and yeah, like that so for example, North Africa and France, or you know Siam and that area, you know all of the former Siamese countries in France, they're all building their CBDCs for interoperability, and it's all based out of France. So the thing is, is like the France still controls all, but it's the same thing with like Portugal and Brazil and like. It's all former uh, colonies linking mm. their government finances to their former colonial overlords. They got they got to maintain that link. They don't want to they don't want to lose it. What is it saying here in this in this article, Tux? Uh, we understand that a lot is connected to tax evasion or linked to illicit activities. <clears throat> Sorry, I was choking on something. Well, whatever. Uh, <laughs> Brazil, yeah, Brazil's Brazil, cracking uh, down. Yeah, they're cracking down. Um, and of course, part of that's because the Brazilian central bank is also working on its own CBDC. So they're going to try and discourage, you know, the real free methods of crypto. I mean, which, you know, 
are questionably free even by themselves. And then they want to show their Fed coin, basically. All right, last we have uh, a new Monero service, private image sharing with XMR payments to unhide and view the image you get paid for sharing content. Uh, I know exactly what kind of service this sounds like. Um, <laughs> I but, thought uh, I thought this is uh, very well made. It's, it's it's I'll show it off because it awesome. looks like it's actually people are just sharing funny stuff right now. Um, yeah, that sounds like a very NSFW service. It does. I, I tested um, it out. It works very well. What did so, we, yeah, what did we say wanna, about yeah. Monero fans? Should I should I actually so, pay for any of these? <laughs> They're actually not cheap. I, the one I paid for was like eight bucks, and it was like a picture of uh, I don't know, it was a drawing, but I want that. Oh, is, is it this um, drawing? Yeah. So yeah, if you check it out, it's it's pretty cool. So so view. Is it safe view. to view? Uh, and now, if you were to send Monero to that address, it will right, display the image. Let's send uh, zero point. 0.05. Wow, that's seven dollars. I know, <laughs> like uh, this is sort of be good. But, yeah, I'm uh, one of those I'm sure people who watch it. Go ahead. If it's if it's over fifty millenaro, I start to question the price because, like, um, I've gotten to the point now where I can kind of do the U.S. dollar to Monero conversion in my head, um, because I use it enough. And so I'm to the point where if it's like, if it's over 50 Millenaro, I'm like, mm, let me think about this. Is it worth that? All right. Got to wait yeah. for one confirmation. But it, it, it's, it's very, the site is very slick, very simple, uh, very easy to create an account. Actually, if you go to uh, login or create an account, it just asks for your, uh, to create a username and a Monero address. Um, and then you can just upload pics and lock them, set the price. You could imagine, you know, use your imagination. Oh, you can imagine what this thing is. will most likely be used for. Um, and after just one comp, which of course takes only like 15 seconds with Monero. Yeah. Yeah. It's good it use is. case. It's, yeah. Good nice use job. case. And we that will, is a we will be. Impressive picture. Impressive freehand. Yeah. That's pretty awesome. Uh, Tux, it, it's fair to say we will have some functionality like this on XMR Bazaar for digital downloads, right? I mean, it won't be, yes. uh, yep. you yep. know, exactly analogous, but it will effectively do the same thing. Yeah, it's now, very cool. Interesting. I, li I like this. Cool. With, yeah. With XMR Bazaar, how much, um, how much control do you as the admin have over it? Are you able to like take down listings and things like that? Or is this going to be a, uh, I can't control what you put up kind of thing or what? No, unfortunately not. Uh, it's going to be, yeah. We we're going to have to follow, people follow some rules. certain illegal stuff yeah. on, on there. Yeah. Unfortunately, that's just, that's just, because I figured I, I would liken it to curated, on. you know, okay. just, uh, just like mods exactly. removing, illegal activities because yeah. i was going to say if this is yeah, decentralized I, like uh bisc or something like that then you couldn't control sh nothing. the thing is is it as far as like the actual transaction it is like the peak of decentralized like they don't have any custody over the actual monetary side of things if i'm not mistaken it's, i've just been a yeah, casual observer but um, it's it's quite literally like just mods for preventing illegal activities sort of deal, and then transactions themselves go on outside of the purview of the website. Correct. Yeah. The the anybody that wants to transact can use the multi sig, um, and that's that's at pretty much that's out of our control, right? Yeah. Uh, but the yeah, but if thing, it's on the those, website itself, I mean, those have those to be curated. Like we're not gonna like let if, somebody put like methamphetamine on there. Right? I was gonna say like if somebody wanted to post an uh, if somebody wanted to post an ad for cannabis, they can't do that. Well, I mean the the, the rule is basically gonna be you know uh, based on the you follow the rules of your jurisdiction, right? Where where you are, um, and then uh, we may have to step in at times if we feel like there's egregious, uh, you know things that are being done that are clearly outside of, of the law. Um, 
I mean, we would but like it's, a it's run, where it's run by, by liber- liberty-minded people that believe yeah. in free and open yeah. markets. So we're always leaning towards uh, more, not less. Uh, but with the balance, playing the balancing act of not we're doing We're never going to KYC our work. customers. We'll shut down yeah. before we ever have to do that. Also, keep in mind like how long people have been looking for a way to like validate their their vendors, and people have been looking for a very long time for something that's kind of like in between a dark market and an Amazon. But for Monero, I mean, it it fills a huge, huge chasm. I mean, it's I don't know. I've been pretty impressed with a lot of these projects. Like, I'm stoked about the Noto. I'm stoked about XMR Bazaar because I can see that. It's a grounded movement for real things that real people need now. The thing that never yeah. took off that made me sad was Open Bazaar back in like 2017 or 18 or whatever it was. Yeah. I thought I thought that if that took off like it should have, I thought that was going to well, be really good because that, that, then they was, that was a, That was a Bitcoin problem, right? I mean, uh Bitcoin wasn't wasn't uh, didn't work well for digital cash purposes yeah uh, i think that's a lot with a lot of the reason why it failed i think eventually they be, they became more bitcoin cash right but it just didn't have didn't have the network effect to my I'm knowledge have the, uh, experience on this side i'm gonna make no. an account real quick you must agree to be incredibly based um <laughs> Uh, you just, you can add like a uh, Twitter handle or username, email address, bio uh, picture. Uh, of course, that's for my address. Submit. Pretty simple. Pretty fit, straightforward. So I guess upload. Uh, which what should I upload? What should I? Upload? Do you have a Monero Chad? I think I there's a, a certain Chad. penguin logo that would fit quite nicely with. <laughs> it's probably the same one in the profile picture. I'm already giving away for it is, It's got to be something a little it. more enticing, you know, that people are going to want to look at. Let's see. Let's see. I probably get a picture of... Uh, maybe maybe oh, a picture maybe. of you, right? Because you never show your face. So if people want to pay to see it. <laughs> oh, that's a good Ain't nobody point. got that much of <laughs> <SMR. laughs> Oh, I got it. I got How it. much oh, you want to pay to see the, see the real I, tuxedo? I Let's see. Let me uh, ask you guys well, for, actually show you for, X, for XMR Bazaar, for the, the account creation, for the sign up, for the registration. Um, what do you think of, of what they're doing here where they're just asking for a username and a Monero address? What do you, what do you guys think of that as, as a, a way to log in? Just curious. Honestly, you need tiers. It's the only logical way to do this. Like, because you know, you you're like a full anonymity tier and you need to have it where vendors or purchasers or whatever can opt out of using like full anonymity exchange customers. But, you know, a vendor might be more than happy to accept payment from a, a fully anonymous user and mail it to wherever. Um, but the other thing is, is having an account that can develop some kind of street cred is one of the most enticing aspects of this for like the the lay person. I mean, most people have never used a dark market and the, they, they don't realize just how high the trust factor on the dark market actually is. But, they, you know, that's what sketches them out. So you want to have the option to, you know, just like an eBay seller, a lot of people yes. will only use somebody that other people have vouched for. Um, and then there's the question of, are those just random anonymous accounts vouching for these people? Or are these people that have done business with a lot of people that are vouching for them? I mean, it, it's as much of a hassle as it would be on the back end to create all of these things. Like it really does need a tier system. And if you want to follow the ethical principles of allowing anonymous people to buy a loaf of bread or whatever, it has to be available. So um mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's, that's my two cents i've been on yeah. the net market but i've never purchased anything from there because i've not had any reason to i have never wink ever wink wink purchased <laughs> anything on a dark wink dark market place. a dark wink market <laughs> a free, a free yeah market. i like being able to only have to do start with username but email is an option i think that's the best honestly because some people want to what do you say email. 
I I think uh, username and email as optional is the best because like not everybody wants that, but some people do. Some people want uh, emails or an ability to reset their password like that. So I think it's great to have it. Well, but what do you think of this idea of using the Monero address as essentially your your password? Because that's that's what you just did here when you logged into oh, uh, Hushpix. That's what I did. Yeah. yeah, basically your basically your, <laughs> <Monero address becomes your laughs> password. I hope I hope that's not an address you've posted publicly elsewhere. See, this is the pro this is one of the issues with it. <laughs> I guess uh, I uh I didn't even pay attention to it. Let me look, let me look. I'm gonna go into yeah, so like a, log uh, log out and log back in. Like that become that Monero address becomes your password. Register. I mean, I would say just Wait, finish the well, thing and then create a new what? Monero wallet. Literally, that's so funny because it doesn't say uh it doesn't tell you that it doesn't tell you that here i'll go ahead and i'll log out uh log out well no Actually, just I'll, finish I'll, what I'll, you're I'll, doing I'll and then first. just move yeah. all your monero I'll to a different the wallet, image so. that i'm uploading if i can find where it went um so i guess that answers my question maybe it is something we don't want to do i thought it was kind of cool doing it that way um, as long as you're not tuxedo and sharing your address publicly you're fine <laughs> Let's see the first person who can figure out Tuxedo's uh, password. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's, I made a new one just for that. I oh, made yeah. a new one just for that. Uh, and I honestly don't care if somebody was still logging. You watching. should know he's uh, way more paranoid than that, Doug. He's yeah, got, yeah, yeah. He's so got anyway, burner this wallets image, and I burner am, phones and burner PCs. Put up. This is a, a Monero chan spinning facts. Only idiots keep Monero centralized exchanges. Oh, you can't uh, tell us, man. You can't show us the image. No, I guess I I'm going to. <laughs> <I'm gonna, laughs> you can see it for free. I didn't make it. I'm not going to. I'm going to log. I'm going to log in as. I'm uh, going to log in as I'll Tuxedo and then take pictures of ads for like marijuana and post them on there so, under Tuxedo, so that if the law comes after me, it'll be under his. It'll be I'm under his account. I'm going to modify my uh, <laughs> account information. I, I may have shown the whole address. I don't know. Maybe just barely. Who can type it in quick enough? Uh, we're gonna make it as like super cheap, okay? Because I, I didn't make this image, I don't know who made that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so you could make we'll it. We'll find uh, a way increase, to donate it to the original uh, artist or something. The One millionaire. The image more expensive each time someone's paid. Uh, each time someone pays, that's cool. Increment amount. Uh, payment expiration. You can make it expire. So it'll expire at forty hours. Submit. Oh, it must be at least 001. All right, submit. So there you go. And now if I open this in like a, a tab I'm not logging to, uh, here, how about I log out? Let's log out real quick. Body, body should use this for his uh, for his charts. For, oh, wait, sorry. You can't even see the tab. See I, his... I forgot. I wasn't showing it. There we go. Um, yeah, so it's made this listing for 0 0.001 Monero. Uh, and if I log out, then yeah, it looks like that. Let's log back in. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> there it is, guys. There it is. That's it's kind of cool. It's, it's... What, what I like about this idea, though, for if we did it for XMR Bazaar, uh, well, it does make account creation super simple, right? Um, and then you've now associated a Monero wallet with the user right off the bat. And then I was thinking it, it, it would be cool to maybe award users of XMR Bazaar with like micropayments as they take actions on the website. So as they... Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah post comments on listings or as they fill out their profile, they'll get uh, sent micro payments. You know, you know where that would make the most sense, Doug, is when people are filling a request that's been posted for like people requesting a certain thing be available in Monero, they can put up a certain amount of money. And then on the first delivery of such a thing, like they get the bounty for having provided yes. the service. That would be pretty cool. Yes. Yes, we spoke oh, about so that. Like, yeah, kick, kind of a Kickstarter for for items and services in Monero. So, like, I say, yeah. I say I want raw egg. I I say I want like fresh eggs, and I'm willing to pay uh, thirty millenero for them. And somebody comes and fills that order and collects that. Is that what you're saying? Exactly. Yeah, like a bounty. And the thing is, is I think that would keep you outside of the purview of like a full blown custody. Where if somebody were freely giving away Monero to see a bounty filled, you would not be a custodian for an exchange so much as you would be a person, you know, um, just like, you know, any other donation platform works where 
you're not a custodian just because you're holding Monero or whatever for the purposes of filling a bounty. Um, and then that, that could also be how you pay for the maintenance of the website. Like, you know, point one or like point five percent or whatever of all bounties fulfilled, uh, that, you know, that goes to the maintenance of the website. But you just try to make it where you stay out of the exchanges, but you, you, you know, on the service side of things, that's where you pay for the maintenance of the website. Yes. Interesting. Well, what, I guess so what I got, I got to ask you then. So, Tux, now that you logged it, what do you think of this as a potential way to register, create accounts in XMR Bazaar, this method? By using the, uh, the address as a password? Um, yeah. I mean, it forces people to have a really, really, really long password. But, um, so I can show you this. It doesn't show the full thing. You can't show it. 90 changed, characters, it, isn't I it? I changed it. Um, yeah, so it forced people to have, like, an unbootable password for the most part. But I don't know. It's just kind of kind of weird. Is it bad, is it bad ops? Is it bad, think, like, security? Maybe, yeah. like, a hash of your address or is something. The address is, you know, like, if you accidentally share it, if you accidentally show it, right? That should This right. should be something you should be able to show. If you accidentally show it, share it. Oh, I, oh crap, I didn't realize that wasn't my, my Hushpix password. <laughs> Then uh, I would rather be able to just set passphrases. Passphrases are incredibly secure. Um, that's what I do for my instead of just regular random characters. Interesting, um, but clearly I wasn't paying attention. And at the same time, it doesn't say, "Hey, that's your password." It just says handle Monero address. I was like, when I was registering, I was like, "Oh, it wants my XMR address." That's I was expecting password to be somewhere down here or to send me a confirmation email or something. That never happened. Hmm. Uh, even though you guys are probably just talking about that and I wasn't even listening. What I do uh, for passwords is always just uh, use uh, KeyPass, the password manager, and then I generate like 64 character passwords for everything that I can. Yeah, there you go. That's a good way to do it. I do, uh, I do yeah, passphrases that... with Bitward. Yeah. Definitely. I do think it's it's slick, though. It's slick. I like it. It's I'm trying, I'm trying to make uh, the login as slick as makes possible. People, uh, have good passwords it forces people to uh yeah. i wonder if let's say i try to make an account with um there you can't see the full thing still haha uh -huh. um what if i did the, like um, one two three four you know oh okay yeah it's actually it's gonna yeah, make yeah. it's gonna make sure it's i could probably put something fake though i imagine because you said monero's 96 characters right so let's say i generate um yeah. unless 90... it's actually checking for Six. the characteristics of Monero address. Let's do only alphanumeric and yep. Right. Okay. Oh wait, no. Is it ninety or ninety six? No, I I, I think it's using a block explorer to check and see. No, if it's not that quickly. You don't no think way. so? No way, not that quickly. Uh, yeah, that's a good point. That would be a lot of computing power. Monero address count. 95 close very close let's try 95 and let me put like an eight on the front because uh that means it's a sub address 95 yeah that will that will definitely work then because other how else would it be copy paste i'm gonna remove the v at the beginning and put an eight there an eight no <laughs> what did i are you sure you didn't paste on top of not completely deleted no yeah it, yep. Okay. Hmm. Weird. I don't know. Is there a certain pattern or something? Or maybe I'll just reload the page. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. All right. Maybe well, it like maybe it's are like. Are there uh, other characteristics to a Monero address? Oh wait, yeah. hold on. Standard format addresses are ninety-five characters, starting with a four. Integrated addresses are one hundred six characters. That's a sub address, right? Let me just remove that and do a four. I don't know. <laughs> I don't rem. <laughs> so I'm looking at this uh, standard address, 95 characters start with four. Oh, second character can only be in numbers zero to nine or letters A or B. Okay. So there's some specific. Uh... All right, let me try again. Four 
Oh, where did that page go? There we go. Yeah, 4A. 4B. No. No? Okay. <laughs> well, there must be some sort of pattern that it's not getting the ism and arrow address. I mean, There's how sure are you that they're not running a block explorer for like compilation of addresses ahead of time and they're comparing it to a database? Oh, I mean, that's true. Like, potentially. That seems like a lot of work but, for that, though. But a Monero address isn't in a block explorer until the very first time it ever transacts. So if I was to create a new wallet right now oh, that's true. and then go yeah. to sign up for it, then it wouldn't be in any block explorer because it never received a transaction. That's true. Anar Anarchia would, would figure this out. Yeah, that I don't know. It's from, a mystery. <laughs> that and from my understanding, uh, uh, the address is never public anyway because it's using ring uh the, the ring signatures and stuff ring, ring signatures and ring well it still things. exists and it can still be like you can still see monero addresses it's just it's impossible to decipher like what they might actually be up to because everybody yeah, what actual transactions they were a part of oh okay mm.